Infection control, the primary precaution or, or, uh, in infection control is thorough hand washing. You want to do this in between clients, right, sometimes during the session if you need to. Uh, this can be done mechanically from washing your hands or, or disinfecting the table. But another name for washing your hands is called medical asepsis. That's water uh, friction and soap. But make sure that you're washing your hands at least for a couple of minutes. You can use a nail brush, get your nails, you know, get rid of your jewelry. Don't use a lot of jewelry and aesthetics, because, especially rings, because you can get bacteria under them as well. Um, and plus, you can always be wearing gloves. Unless you just have to have a watch, you know, in a, in a, in a band, but not a lot of gaudy jewelry, not under gloves. All right? So, thorough hand washing is the, the primary precaution, all right, in infection control. Washing your hands often will keep you from getting colds and flus more than anybody else. Now, if you work around children or around lots of children, you have to keep them cleaner. You can get some other cold and flus. But as far as universal precautions, this is an, uh, a Centers for Disease Control approach, all right? The Centers for Disease Control created some rules, regulations, and laws that say that every type of bodily fluid you see needs to be considered um, contagious, harmful, all right? And you need to treat every, uh, every human tissue and fluid as if it were known to be infectious with human immunodeficiency virus or HIV, the hepatitis B virus, and other blood-borne pathogens, all right? Herpes. Herpes, hepatitis B, HIV. So to me, as a clinician, when, I, when I'm doing waxing, I'm thinking of these three things because you do a bikini wax, and what happens after a bikini wax almost every time? Blood. Now tell me that you put that wax, you have now blood on that, and I can double dip with that. Come on. Oh, no. Underarms always bleed, mm -hmm. and I'm good at underarms. <laughs> Very good, and they still bleed. All right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because they're on something systemic that thins out their skin. Right? Uh, universal precautions were first developed by the Centers for Disease, Disease Control in Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. in 1987. All right? Before then, doctors were coughing. <laughs> They had gloves, but they were coffee, and it's just not good. If you look at them now, it looks like they're going in to weld, <laughs> right? But the guidelines include the use of gloves, masks, and eyewear when in contact with any bodily or, or, or blood fluids. The thing about acne is that exudate any serum, any, you know, any lymphocytes, any pus, any blood can squirt right into your eye, into your mouth, into your nose, to any of that. So when you're dealing with any type of acne extraction, your mouth needs to be covered and your eyes need to be covered with goggles. We're going to be wearing those when we do extraction. All right? Your hair needs to be away from your face as well. We'll pull it back up. All right, at least for those procedures. All right, anyway, the rest is just saying that uh, you want to use soap and water. You want to use disposable paper towels as often as possible. Uh, hands or other surfaces are to be washed immediately and thoroughly, if uh, and thoroughly if contaminated with blood. You don't let blood sit, right? Gloves must be worn if your hands are not intact or cut, or a finger caught, which looks like a little finger condom, can be worn as well. Gloves must be worn when there is a potential for direct contact with bodily fluids, mucous membranes, non-intact skin of clients, handling of items, that are soiled, all of that. And if you work in a medical environment, you're going to see the biohazard containers. They're either going to be red or they're going to be white trash cans so they're going to have that little symbol on them that says you throw anything that's bloody in there. Now, with acne, if your six-inch applicators, otherwise known as a long wooden tip Q-tip, right, have blood all in it, that doesn't necessarily have to go into your biohazard container. You actually can break the tip off and throw that in there if you'd like. But it's actually pieces of God saturated in blood that really need to be in a biohazard container. So small amounts of blood can actually be thrown into the trash can, according to OSHA. But with me, it makes me feel better to just break off that little piece and throw it into my biohazard container with my sharps. And then I throw the stick away because nothing's funnier than to see a sharps container at an aesthetic school with six applicators sticking out of it. And now it has to <laughs> people filling it are probably going to be going, what? Because that's what they do. They either fill it with with, uh, with cement or concrete or they incinerate it. Absolutely. That's as if you have a little spot and can you take it to a clinic or hospital and just ask if they will just hold it? Well, I mean, 
I think I heard Trish say that one time that you can write in an emergency room. I don't think an emergency room would be very happy if you just go and go in your sharps container. So as much as I've heard that, I don't know that I've ever had that validated. So the best thing is to actually call a bio uh, biohazard you know disposal company, and they're probably not going to charge you very much if they're going to pick you up a little sharps container. And how long in private practice is it going to take you to fill up a sharps container? I mean, I have boxes of needles that have hundreds of needles in it. And a needle is one of the things I use the least because not everybody has all that milia that needs the needle extraction. So if I take your ears to fill up a little sharps container, you know, and until then, if you're doing, you can drop it all. yeah, yeah, um, you might want to ask first. Um, so gloves must be must uh, be put on prior to beginning the task and removed when the task is complete, especially if you have to do any cleaning. And believe it or not, you may have to help the nurses in the surgical techs clean a surgery area because the doctor's job is to do the, st the, the surgery and leave. He does not clean anything up and he does not set it up, okay? That is not his job. Surger uh, sur uh, surgical techs set up his implements. His, uh, uh, you may be helping in that and taking things out of an autoclave and putting them the way the doctor wants them. A surgical environment is a high-stress environment and he is going to be aggressive. Um, so if you work for dentists, you know what it's going to be like to work for a surgeon. They're not the nicest people to work for because they they can be a little bit more verbally abusive than you expect. So do get used to that if you are going to assist or help in any way in the surgery room. Uh, just be aware that it's an aseptic environment and you just can't walk into one of those rooms, okay? You have to be, you have to be scrubbed down, and, you know, wear the right clothes, your shoes have to be covered. I mean, all of that. I mean, even in watching surgery, you have to be prepped, okay? So just know that the doctor will not clean the thing. He will not set anything up. That's the nurses and the MAs and the surgery techs and maybe even you. That's your job, to clean up all his blood and everything, okay? Not his, okay? Get ready for that in case you have to do it. All right? So as far as laundry, um, soul linen should be handled as little as possible, as fast as possible. It's going to be hot water and a hot dryer, all right? Uh, and then contaminated lin linens is one cup of chlorine bleach can be added to the wash. There's a little biohazard label that you'll see. Uh, it doesn't have to be red. Sharps containers and blood containers tend to be red, but, but as far as biohazard type trash cans, they can be yellow, they can be white, they can be blue. It's that little biohazard you know, symbol that you'll see in all of those uh, containers. But while floors or any other surfaces are not directly associated with the transmission of infections, um, uh, therefore, attempts to disinfect or sterilize are not necessary except for the area of the specific blood spill. We do have blood spill kits. Um, however, clean and removal of soil should be done routinely using products that according to the manufacturer's instructions are obviously adequate for any type of sanitation. Um, if you work uh, for a nice private med spa, you may have to do this yourself versus if you work in a hospital-based skin care clinic, which there are hospital-based skin care clinics. Um, they might have someone do it for you, but again, uh, this is going to be something more in a, in, a, in a surgery room setting and not really in something you're doing. You're not really spilling blood like that.